Hello everyone, so as you can see in the event tab we were right and I'm so glad I told you guys to save because the leaks are finally confirmed and we're gonna have a uh, Hatset and Artemis banner on Friday so a lot of exciting news so let's get started Okay, so should you summon this weekend? The answer is going to be short for every single class from free to play to whale and krakens. Yes, 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 you should summon. And not only for Hatset, but also for Artemis, even though I think Hatset and Hatset dupes are going to be the most wanted, uh, Artemis is going to be quite an amazing uh, hero as well. Um, but let's uh, let's look at what this banner is going to look like uh, before we go a little bit into more depth uh, in for Artemis because we all know what Hatsu does and how versatile she is and how good she is. So the legendaries are going to be Hatsu and Artemis, which is quite amazing. I've seen uh, uh, quite a pattern with Moonthorn's banners uh, quite uh, recently, ever since the. Uh, last and arrogance banner they've done and they've then they've basically placed a lot of good banners for all of us to have and I think this is one of them um, Hatsut as I said really amazing hero I don't have her and many people that do uh, got her through her first uh, 10x so very good for them I hope uh, the other plebeians like me uh, are going to be able to have her as well even though I don't have too many summons but uh, alongside Hatset we're gonna have Artemis, um, a cult um, healer from the cult faction and um, alongside them we're gonna have some pretty interesting epics as well. I mean Scorch is quite a good epic, I mean he's a well-rounded AoE fighter that helps you a lot in the uh, faction trial so this is a good, uh, a good epic. Uh, as well as Olog, which is actually one of the best epic tanks, if not the best epic tanks there are out there. So um, uh, he is going to be, if you don't have him, he is going to be worth pulling on this banner for sure. He alone can increase your account um, efficiency and uh, account uh, utility in a variety of content. So this Olog is amazing to have in a in an epic banner and alongside those two epics we have also an azoth which actually i don't use him quite a lot but uh, i think you can do some interesting builds with him you can make a build or try to reach a build in which he ults almost um, all the time and that's pretty cool but all in all even the epics are decent the second legendary besides hatsut is quite good and promising and Hatset is the best hero in the game, arguably. So this banner is going to be amazing to pull on. So that's what I'm what I'm going to do on Friday as well, and I advise you to do the same. If any of you guys, and a short disclaimer, if any of you guys want to want me to pull for you, um, I'll announce a live on Friday in which we can do that together and uh, pull on your guys' account. So we all know Hatset. We all know how good she is. We all know what she does. Uh, for those that don't or are newer to the game, just know that she is an AoE marksman. Um, she is uh, a very good because she also can deflect damage by being invisible. And uh, basically she's very useful in Gure 3 and in a lot of content from the game. So she is considered to be one of the best heroes in the game, if not the best. But what about armies, right? So. Let's uh, let's look a little bit more into Artemis's kit because he, in my opinion, is one of the best looking heroes that we've ever gotten in Watcher of Flames. Like, look at this guy. He has amazing, amazing posture. I love snipers in every single game. Uh, if it was a medieval game, I always would have played an archer long range. If it was uh, a more of a modern warfare game, I always like to pick a sniper. And I love the sniper look, the sniper everything and I love edgy looks usually and he is a sniper with an edgy look so this is the best combination ever I think he could have made a very very good uh, a very very good DPS not healer but uh, on that 
he actually can do DPS even if he's a healer. So let's read into him a little bit more. So Artemis, renowned for his formidable blood healing technique, the Sanguine Surgeon is a con constant presence amidst the Fallen. His vital serum wields a dual power, inflicting anti-healing on foes while bestowing recovery upon allies. So that's pretty cool, right? You can already sense what his kit is going to look like from his description. So talent. When healing allies applied with blood craving restores 2% rage. So blood craving is increases the healing received from Aramis's basic attack by 30%. So that's quite good, right? He's also going to increase the healing uh, received from Artemis's basic attack by 30% and also provide some rage regen for himself, which is quite good. Why? Because you'll see in a moment he's actually going to be able to do DPS during his ultimate. So let's read into, into his single target heal. Grants attack based healing to one ally in range and Im you can improve that by up to 20% healing multiplier at level 5. So he has attack based healing to some people usually that would be disappointing right because attack based healers aren't necessarily that good because you don't do anything else with the attack the, the attack that you accumulate on a healer besides uh dealing more heals right but uh, that's why vortex as an epic healer was so sought after or so useful because he had hp based healing and at least you could have used his HP that you built for him to also be quite a good tank. This is why he was very good to tank uh, hits in gear rate 221, right? You can put him on the left side and tank every hit from the little uh, boulder people attacking you. So uh, your other uh, lineup hero can be lineup heroes can be can be free, right? So usually you would want someone that can benefit from his uh, stat based healing, right? So up until now attack based healers weren't necessarily that good depending on what else uh, or what synergies they might have besides the, the uh, stat based healing. But now since we have a DPS healing hybrid like Artemis this is going to be quite useful to be on attack based healing. So let's continue reading. Grimson R uh, Reaper. During the ultimate locks onto enemies dealing 160% AOE damage to up to 8 enemies with each attack and inflicting anti-healing on them. So right that is quite good and you can get that for get that up to one up to 200% AOE damage at level 3 which is amazing for a healer right? So he's not only going to be able to heal but during his ultimate he's also going to be able to um, deal damage and provide anti-healing. So especially with Boreas's uh, nerfs, even though they plan to improve his anti-healing, having another anti-healer out there can be quite useful, especially in gear 1. So I think I saw a, f a video of Fastidious, I think, that uh, he used this guy uh, and created some builds and showcased him in gear 120, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And he was able to solo 120 with Artemis, which was amazing for a healer. Like, you gotta remember, he is a healer, right? And he was able to 120 to solo 120. That's amazing. So, he, during his ultimate, is going to be able to do up to 200% AoE damage to 8 enemies with each attack and inflict anti healing. So, that's perfect for Kirid 1. And uh, besides that, he's also going to heal. So, let's say that he has, instead of enemies, he has a lot of. Uh, of uh, allies in range he's not only going to deal dps during his ultimate if there are no enemies there he's also going to be able to hit your uh, your allies and heal them so revitalizing shot during the ultimate heals up to three allies around the target with 100 percent healing multiplier upon hit basic attack prioritizes enemy targets during the ultimate unless there are only allies in range so as i told you before unless there are only allies in range he's going to prioritize enemy targets but he's, he's capable of uh, healing allies too so uh, heals up to three allies around the target with 100 percent healing multiplier upon hit that's amazing so he can heal allies around him while uh, while uh, while dealing damage, so he's not lacking in the healing department. He is still doing damage and healing at the same time. Sanguine Tonic. So periodically locks onto allies, excluding the hero, so excluding Aramis itself, himself, and throws Sanguine Tonic on them. 
when hitting the target applies blood craving to nearby allies and heals them with one hand with a 120 healing multiplier so this is the way that you apply blood craving apparently so you periodically lock onto allies and then throw sanguine tonic on them um, every 30 seconds apparently so uh, blood craving lasts for 10 seconds so let's say there's going to be a 20 second gap in which you're going to reset blood craving so uh, during blood craving he's also going to restore two percent rage so i think it's building him with a little bit more rage regen can help um but uh, i think it's still we still need to test this out and see how it goes but he looks very promising and besides that he looks very cool i know he, this might be underwhelming and some minimax people might want just utility but i think this game started uh, his uh, started to attract audience by the way it looked and i really think it's very important to have some uh, cool looking heroes like Artemis because it's nice it's very nice like even I'm, I, I'm sorry to say that zealous is so bad but it's it's so cool looking right so it's it, it is underwhelming when you have a really cool looking hero but uh, quite a weak one but it doesn't seem to be the case for Artemis. So I'm really excited to see what I get. I don't think I'll have enough to pull for both. I don't know if I will ever, I'll even get one of them. S to be honest, with my luck, I'll probably get uh, another useless legendary that I don't need. But <laughs> we'll see that on Friday. But um, I don't think I'll be mad if I get Artemis. I know I really want Hatset. Maybe, maybe I'll be a little bit bummed. But at least Artemis is a good looking hero and is nonetheless a useful one so um, yeah I think I'll read into his story in uh, one of my next videos because he definitely looks like he has a cool story and I'll definitely pull on Friday and I urge you to pull as well because it is very 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 um, a very cool panel other than that the crazy divine summoning and the crazy invocation of spirits man I mean who else would choose to go on that rather than the headset pan 10x i don't think that's even it's a no-brainer in my opinion go for the headset 10x and the ancient summoning starting on saturday i don't think that we should pull our, our ancients yet because valderon is still on its way on his way and we have been saving like crazy i have 91 ancient summoning crystals I haven't spent them for quite a while now and i'm planning on gathering even more because i really want valderon in case you don't know, Valderon is going to be a chaotic, um, a chaotic lord, a fighter that's going to be quite crazy if he stays the way he is on the test server right now. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we don't. Sp I don't think we should spend our ancient just yet, but definitely we should go for the headset and Artemis 10x. So, uh, wishing you guys best of luck in the upcoming weeks uh, weekend banner. Again, if you want to join our live or uh, have me pull your pulls or your summons on uh, my live on Friday, I think I'll be streaming my li my pulls live on um, 9 p.m. Um, EET. So make sure that you check me out and see what I pull. Um, maybe you can bring me a little bit of luck. Other than that, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or um, if you would like to see something from uh, something else in my explanation or talk about something a little bit more, uh, don't forget to like, to subscribe, to comment. I respond to every single comment that I see. Uh, this has been Andy, Event Horizon Gaming. See you guys.